Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Drama Free Friday. How are you? I hope you're doing well. It's your word for the day. Dream on. Well, it's actually dream, but you know. I hope you're having a great day. Hello, hello. Hi, Nancy. Hey, Deborah. Also known as Grammy. <laughs> I saw that in the chat. Trying to be trying to be thrifty on us. Hi, Ina. No sound. You have no sound from me. Hmm. Really? Sound. Okay, the sound is bouncing here. But you okay. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, no sound at all. Very low. Okay, why is the sound low? Okay, just a minute. Okay, that's right. Okay, what do we have going on here? Melody hears me fine. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Very low. All right, just a minute. We may have a little technical issue here. I'm not sure. All right. Hello, hello, hello. All right, hang on a minute. Nancy's got her speakers up full volume. <laughs> okay. I don't know. We're checking we're checking with the technical issues here. So, hang on. <clears throat> Silent Movie Friday. <laughs> Apparently so. All right. I'm just waiting a minute, so I'm not saying anything. Debbie's got good lip reading skills. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop streaming for the moment. I'm gonna stop and I will be back in a little bit. Okay, so hang on. All right. We are streaming. I'm good? Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Okay. All right. Well, that should be better. Is that better, everybody? Perfect. Something had gotten shifted inside the settings of the computer. The gremlins have been at it again. So anyway, <clears throat> welcome to Drama Free Friday with a little bit of drama thrown in just for good measure. Yeah, just we had to throw in a little bit of drama just because every once in a while we have to do that, right? <laughs> oh, who knows? Anyway. So anyway, welcome, welcome. Okay, I think we're back doing what we're supposed to do. Although the beginning of this, if you're watching the recording, is going to seem pretty, a little awkward, but eh, it's a live stream. <coughs> Race liked it before. Yes, Race is the technical department, in case you didn't know. And he just put in the chat that he liked it before. <laughs> so who knows? Anyway. All right, so hopefully you guys are uh, are okay. The sound is okay for you, and we're good to go. 
I don't know what happened. Gremlins. Anyway, welcome to Drama Free Friday. I'm Barb Owen. Of course, now it's hot. Huh. There's nothing like technical issues to just give you a hot flash, people. I'm just telling you. <laughs> and I don't even have hot flashes. Ah, so anyway. Ah, so let's see. I was telling everyone hello when we uh, got so rudely interrupted by a sound issue. So let me just go back for a second. Um, I'm going to scroll back through the chat so I can just say hello to everybody. And let's see. Um, Bonnie and Diane and Judy. Dorothy, hello, hello. Hey, Travis. Deborah, also known as Grammy. And Debbie. Let's see. Let's see, Dorothy, I think I said hello to you. Nancy. Nancy Dale, you need to get on. I'm just telling you straight to you, Miss Nancy. You need to get on the show and shares for Mandala Madness. And you need to show those mandalas in person because they are gorgeous. Just saying. Hi, Ina. Uh, Nina. Beth. Hello, hello. So nice to see everybody. Hey, Melody. And hi, Sandy. Debbie Boring. We got, we've got lots of Debbies here today. Hi, Michael. I'm not speaking to Race because he's saying bad things. <laughs> no, I'm not being bad to him. He fixes things for us. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Rebecca. Who else? And Becky and Janet. And uh, da, 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 da. hi, Neen. Alice. Hey, Alice. Good to see you. Hi, Ellen. Jillian. Annette. Maria. Hey, Valerie. I'm just trying to catch everybody that I did, missed a minute ago. Um, Miss Allie. Hi, Karen. Hi, Tori and Patty. Good to see you. I hope your hand is better. Hi, Lisa. Okay. I know you put them on Twitter, which I'm really glad you put them on Twitter. Believe me, I'm really glad you put them on Twitter. But it would be even better if I could see them in the live group. Just saying. <laughs> I got to turn the air down just a little bit. It's a little bit warmish in here today. We are dealing with a heat wave at the moment. Um, it's been here for several days, and the heat index today and tomorrow is supposed to be up to 112. 112, yeah. Not the actual temperature, but the heat heat index. So it's like, let me tell you, even I'm grateful, grateful, grateful for air conditioning. Let me tell you, I could not do this without air conditioning, but there's moments when I'm like, ha, oh. yeah. Anyway, hi, Kimberly. Nice to see you too. Hi, Nina. Um, Let's see. And is Pat here? Hi, Janice. If I miss anybody. Hey, Linda. Um, if I miss saying hello to you, please know that you're welcome, and I'm so glad you're here. I try to catch people right at the beginning, uh, but sometimes I don't always get everybody. Same here in Nashville. Whew. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Allie says she likes my necklace. That's a wire sculpted necklace I did a few years ago uh, with a piece of fused glass. So that's fused glass inside, and this is all wire sculpted with... I think this one's brass wire. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. So, anyway, I'm Barb Owen. And you're at HowToGetCreative.com's show known as Drama Free Friday. Hello, Marion. Marion got happy mail today. Ooh, good. I hope you liked it. And Dorothy says, I sent the cold and rain there. Well, it's not here. That's for sure. That is for sure. So, yeah, it's a little it's a little warm here today, but you know what? I have, if that's the biggest thing I have to complain about, my life is perfect. Yes, perfect. Um all right. Hello, Linda. Yeah, Janet says 100 there. It's just hey, Stephen, good to see you. Yeah, just just really is a little warmish. Anyway, let's get started and stop complaining about the weather. We can't do anything about it anyway. 
And those of you that are just coming in, you missed the technical departments uh, coming to the rescue fixing the audio. We had a little audio gremlin in the system earlier. Anyway, things just sometimes change around. So it's good to have you here. Thank you so much for being here. Mandala Madness is still going on. You can still participate in it. We have a few more weeks of the madness. And if you would like to um, jump in there with us, you're welcome to do that. I was working on a couple of mandalas this week. Here's one. I'll give you a look at it. So here's one I'm working on. It's just in process, but I'm working on that one. Here's another one. doesn't have any color on it yet. So those are in process. Those of you in Mandala Madness, we'll talk more about that tomorrow at the live show and share, which happens tomorrow at 2 Eastern. Be sure and check your email. Uh, your email link will come to you. And uh, yeah, I'd love to have you come join us. You should see some of the mandalas being produced by the class members. They are outstanding. Outstanding. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Nancy has a question. What is it? What's your question, Miss Nancy? Um, hi, Julia. It's your first time in chat? Good. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Um, Travis says today's high is 78 degrees in western Washington. Travis, we're going to ban you from the chat. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> if you keep that up, we're going to ban you right out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Neen. You're having fun with the class. Good. I'm glad you are. Um, yeah, uh, and you should see some. You, uh, you just should see everything that the class members are producing. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> Travis, I, you know I'm teasing you. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Nancy, I don't see your question. <laughs> So you're going to have to stick it in there really quickly because once I start working on the class for today or the whatever we're going to do today, I don't see it. You know that. <laughs> I pretty much don't see it. Uh, okay. I'll try and catch it. I'll try and watch the chat. But honestly, when I'm doing this live, I get busy doing stuff and I don't always catch the chat. I try. Oh, here you go. She was um, Nancy said she was wondering if I finished all the mandalas I started for the class. No, I don't. I did not see your tweet yet, Dorothy. I haven't checked Twitter today, but I will look as soon as I'm finished here. Um, no, I don't finish all those because many of those are process step outs, and so I leave those in the various steps. So I don't finish everything because many of them are repeats you know, for recording the classes. So, you know, I have one that, that goes from here to here, and then it, the next one picks up from there and goes to the, the next step so that I can, I, so that you don't have to sit there and watch me for hours and hours and hours. So, yeah. Uh, but all of the samples, you know, all the finished class samples, of course, I finished all those. Okay, so we're going to get started. And uh, today... You know, one of the questions I get a lot is, what do we do, what do you do with all that stuff that you make? <laughs> Which is always a great question. And um, the answer to the question is, sometimes I don't do anything with it. I make it because I like to make it. Um, oh, Nancy says, did you do the videos for the blog recently? That was an awesome post. Yes, I did. I did. Um, I did do videos and she's talking about the blog post. If you type in to Google or any search engine, if you just type in how to draw a mandala with a compass, if you just type that in, it will show up the very first um, suggestion in the list um, or you'll see an image and you'll see it go to howtogetcreative.com. It'll take you to that post and we've added, it had photos on it before, but I've also added videos to that post. So if you want to see kind of what drawing mandalas is all about, kind of what I do in Mandala Madness, you can go check out that post. And uh, it'll go right over there and there's quite, I mean it was like what, an hour's worth of video, I guess, just three different videos. So anyway, hi Judy. Judy, I sent your mail again. So hopefully it gets to you this time. 
Uh, okay. So there, Race put the link in the chat. You should be able to click on that and go there. Okay. So one of my, as back to what I was saying, one of my favorite questions is, what do you do with all that stuff you make? And sometimes I don't do anything with it. Sometimes I make it, a lot of times I make things just because I make them. And then I find uses for them down the road. So a few weeks ago, we did paste papers. And so I have two paste papers all done. Okay, these were actually ones that we did on the stream. And that um, you'll see that in the, the uh, live stream playlist here on the channel. You can go through the live stream playlist and it's back maybe, I don't know, three weeks, two weeks. So we're going to use that and we're going to do something with it. getting my stuff here so we're going to use those two pieces of paper and we're going to cut them apart and we're going to put them back together hello shoe hi skinny cat hi q here we go again that's right <laughs> here we go again okay so we're going to take a look at this first of all and i got to get in my right spot Here we go. Okay. So what we have here is we have one sheet of paste paper. Yes, it is, Nancy. It is. You need to just work. You need to just bite the bullet and work with your pens. She wants to know if one of the classes was cheating. I normally don't say, normally I don't say anything is cheating, but that particular question that's a little cheatish because <laughs> you're not supposed to erase on that one hi Melissa hi Ann hi Carla <clears throat> okay I don't know what race put in there apparently he's teasing everybody <laughs> just google here Here's how you find it. Just Google how to draw a mandala with a compass. It'll take you there. It, you'll, you will. Okay, let's move on, huh? Let's move on. Okay, so here's what we got. Two pieces of paper. The dimensions of the paper are 12 and a half inches long, nine and a half inches wide. That's what I'm working with. I have two pieces the same size. Okay, I'm gonna set one aside. I'm going to use my rotary cutter. This is a rotary cutting mat. I'm going to use this rotary cutter and I'm going to cut one paper going one direction and the other paper going the other direction. And by that I mean I'm going to do this. Now you have to pay attention to what you're doing. And stop at the end so that the end of the strip is going to stay connected. But I'm making wavy lines just like this. Okay? All right. So I'm going to go to the next one. And I'm going to intend, I don't know if it will happen or not, but I'm going to intend to make them kind of opposite. To the lines to the one previous. Okay, do you see how they're kind of, let's look at it this way. You see how the curves are different? That's the, that's the goal, it doesn't always happen. Okay. All right. Hello, Miss Katie, I saw your name. Okay, so we're gonna do that again. So I'm using a rotary cutter. You could do this with scissors, it's just faster with a rotary cutter. You do, however, have to be careful. Okay. And you're kind of, the, the goal here is to start and end. Okay, I've ended here. I've started here. It's to start and end about the same distance from each side. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway. 
that's what I'm going to do. So talk amongst yourselves for a minute while I finish cutting this. You do need to pay attention to what you're doing. So that um, you are watching, so that you're watching um, the rotary cutter. And you can make those lines fairly curvy. Not super curvy. Leaving the strips connected at one end. Okay? Air on the side of too much connection up here rather than not enough. Okay? There's, I'm leaving a good quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. And if you work with a smaller rotary cutter, this is a small one. This is a 28 millimeter as opposed to this, which is 45 millimeter. The smaller the rotary cutter, the more easily you're going to make the curves. probably get maybe one more out of this. And then I'm going to stop there. Okay, so we have this sheet where all the cuts are going the length of the paper. Okay, but they're all connected at this end. Okay. All right, I'm going to move this off, bring in the other sheet. Now this sheet, I'm going to make all my cuts going widthwise. The other ones on the red and orange sheet were done lengthwise. These are going to go widthwise. Same thing, okay, across the width of the paper. Leave them connected at one end. Now, as I said, you could do this with um, scissors. Just a lot easier and quicker with the rotary cutter. When you're working with the rotary cutter, when I start this cut like this, I can safely put my finger behind the blade, never, ever, ever in front. Okay, never, ever, ever, because you, this is an incredibly sharp tool, and I'm going to tell you, it can cut you in an instant. If you look away for a second, you can slip, and these can, this kind of tool can cut you incredibly severely. So, finger behind the blade only, ever. You can think of this as a rolling razor blade because that is what it is. Okay, keep on moving down till you've done the whole strip. The two, the two sections, the two pieces of paper need to be the same size. And it is best, and I'm not doing this, but it's best if you stand up and look down over what you're doing. Okay, 
Making sense so far, I hope. And it is easier to cut wavy lines crooked <laughs> than it is to cut them in a straight line. And by that, I mean I'm trying to keep the distance up here about the same as the distance down here. Easier said than done. Okay, so we have this piece where the strips are cut widthwise, and we have this one where the strips are cut lengthwise, okay? Hello, Ruth, good to see you. Um, YVI, I'm gonna say Ivy. I don't know if that's correct, but uh, thank you, welcome from Germany. Hi, Rebecca. Flyover Pilgrim is Rebecca, I believe. Yeah, they can do a lot of damage. Hi, Barb. Good to have you here. Scars have stories, exactly. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to be working with this section. Okay, I'm going to be working with this section. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to set it off to the side. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I am going to take the first strip on the end and I'm going to cut it off. Okay? And then I'm going to move this whole section over away from me. And then I'm going to weave these strips together. And this is just like anything you would have done as a kid over, under, over, under, over, under. And you do have to get the first one right. If the first one is not right, none of them are going to be right. And then I find it easiest to turn the whole thing toward me and then pull the strips toward me. Oh, and one other thing I want to do here before I do this. I want to take this, these cuts almost to the end. almost to the end. But I can control this with scissors much better than I can control stopping with the rotary cutter. So that's why I go back and do this with scissors. Okay? So, now I'm going to just turn it around and I'm going to snug this strip all the way up to the end as far as it will go. Now if you really wanted to you could actually cut this apart but you're gonna lose that bit anyway later so it doesn't matter. Okay so we have we have under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. I think we're right. Okay to hold this I just use um, a glue stick and I just put a little glue stick at the end. Okay, I just put a little glue stick at the end. It's fiddly when you're getting this whole thing started. Once you get started, you're good to go. Okay. And then I usually just use my bone folder just to give it a, well, yes, hello. Don't be quite that aggressive. To just kind of encourage it to stay put. Then I come over to the other end and I pick this up and just add a little bit of glue stick on the other end. Making sure everything stays nice and lined up. And I'm going to switch from my cutting board because I don't want to get it full of glue. To my old cruddy board. Which, by the way, since we're here at the cruddy board, I forgot to show you what we did last week. 
these are the finished projects from last week when we did the burnt brown bag or the burnt glue technique. Let me show you here a little bit. A little better, a little closer. Okay, bearing in mind this is very metallic and so because it's so metallic it's very reflective and so it's hard to catch because it, it wants to reflect in the light. Okay, and so this is what we have. So this was the little moleskin notebook that we did. Okay. Good, Beth, that's cool. So there's that one. Here's a tag that we did. And the pieces that are on the top, those are some of the pieces I showed you. That um, those were die cuts. These were die cut gears that I did exactly the same thing with. Those were things that we that I did in times past. And this is the big moleskin book that I showed you a little bit about, I think. Um, but I had not done the, the glue technique and burning it and so forth. So this was after the glue was applied and burned. And then I added some of the other little pieces onto it just for fun. Okay. So that was what we did last week. And I meant to show you that earlier, but I forgot. So there you go. Anyway, back to what we're doing. So that was last week's stream. If you want to see how to do that, you can review that stream, um, which is the burnt brown bag or burnt glue. I forgot what I called it. Then I usually lift up one of these and put a little bit of glue just in the middle someplace just to kind of help stabilize everything. Okay, so there we go. We should be ready to go. Now I take the same piece and I clip off the next one. Okay, so that way I keep myself in order. And now I'm going to weave this one over, under, over, under, all the way. Now it's easy to do this with straight strips, of course, but when you do it with the um, the wiggly cut strips you get a really interesting look and it will take you a little bit longer in some ways because you have to snug them up and sometimes I'll do one and I'm going well, why isn't this thing working you know why isn't it fitting and it's usually just because there's something I didn't do you know I didn't uh, You know, just something that I didn't do right. I know it's hard to believe that I would ever do anything wrong. But just snug the strips up and they will fit back together just like that. Okay, so it fits back together. And then put your glue just a little bit to hold it. all the way across. Now the glue stick is pretty much a temporary thing, but it's enough that it um, can help hold and stabilize stuff for the time being. And again, I usually add a little bit in the center, a couple spots, one or two spots. So you want the lengthwise strips to stay nice in order and then you want to have these strips all snugged up against each other if at all possible. Snug them up. Debbie says she still has her Aline's Big Book of Crafts from the 80s where she showed that technique. She called it Burnt Brown Bag How To and it was card two in the tips and techniques section. Good, cool. Thanks for sharing that. 
Okay, so we're going to clip off the next one. And then just simply repeat the process. The biggest thing you have to do is to stay, keep yourself organized when you're doing this. It seems so simple and so um, elementary, Watson. Uh, but it, it's a little more challenging than it would appear when you're working with the curvy strips. You can do this with fabric as well, which is fun. Fun to do with fabric, fun to do with paper. So everything, once you've got all the strips snugged in, then put a little glue. Add a little glue. Add a little glue. Like so. All right, moving on. You can, and on one of the previous live streams months ago, we did this with little tiny strips, only they were straight strips. We did little tiny, tiny strips, and we used those to create a doll body out of that. So if you want to check that out, that's another playlist with little tiny, I think they were like quarter inch or so strips. But try to keep everything nice and flat and organized as you work. That will help the end product be what you want it to be. So if you have any questions, stick them in the chat in caps. Uh, for fabric, it, Katie says she assumes that you stabilize it. You can or you don't have to. I would probably um, uh, at least starch it really well, like with Aline's, or not Aline's, Mary Ellen's Best Press is the starch that I use. It's a starch alternative and it will make it will stiffen the fabric enough that it's much easier to work with so that's what i do with fabric usually okay. this one is not cooperating quite as well as i want it to Okay, and now we're going on. So this clearly takes a minute. And then I'll show you some things that you can do with it when you're finished. Yeah, you want to use a starch that doesn't get all icky flaky and all that but the fabric it will definitely be easier to work with with fabric if you um, if you do starch it first I mean you could stabilize it you it, any way that you like to work with fabric um, that's the way to do it And I don't, I don't glue down every single strip in the middle, um, mostly because of the sake of time. But you could, if you wanted to, you could lift up every strip and you could, could glue every strip together if you wanted. But I don't find it necessary because I'm going to use a sheet of glue to hold it together here in just a minute. So I don't find that totally necessary to do that. I belong to the Weavers and Spinners Guild here in the town where I live. And um, it is interesting because I don't weave and I don't spin. <laughs> so. 
So what am I doing belonging to that guild, right? Um, but I belong there because they have a fiber arts, they have what they call study groups that are subgroups from the, the uh, large group. And so I belong to the weavers or the fiber study group. And um, so in order to be part of the, the stud, that study group, you have to join the big group. So that's why I'm part of the big group. But it's always funny to me that I don't weave and I don't spin, but I'm part of the group. <laughs> But you never know. I might weave or spin one day, and then I'm already in the group. But this is, and these are paper weight papers. These are not the cardstock weight papers. Yeah, there's nothing quite as nice. Well, there's lots of nice color combinations, but I really like the the contrast of these two. It shows up really well. Complementary colors show beautifully. They do indeed. And one of these papers, the green, the blue-green one, is metallic, primarily metallic, and the uh, the other one, the red-orange sheet, is very flat. So you get a contrast in sheen as well as color, which is cool. So it takes a little bit to uh, weave the paper. Once you have it woven, and it does pay to be picky with this step, meticulous, let's call it meticulous. It does pay to be more meticulous with this because your end result is going to be better because we're going to cut it up. So you really want it to be, um, think of it in smaller pieces. You want the smaller pieces to be as good as the whole. Now you can use the whole piece too and I'm going to show you a piece that I used the whole piece or something I used the whole piece for. But as hopefully what you can see is it looks like the whole thing, you know, I mean, if you look at it and you're familiar with weaving processes, you would go, oh, that's a basket weave. If you're not, you can look at it and you go, how in the world? Because the first time I ever saw this done, I was like, I can't quite imagine how you can work with those wavy lines like that. Well, it's easy. It's no different than working with straight lines. It is no different. It's just a little more challenging. Hello, CB Carol. And anyone else I missed? I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by and spending a drama free Friday with me and everyone. So you can see we haven't been working on this very long and it's coming together quite well and pretty fast. Pretty quickly. I hope your Friday is indeed drama free. We call it drama free Friday because there's enough drama in the world that for a couple of hours every week we just put it outside this creative space, put it outside of our heads and our hearts and just relax and be creative and pretend we just blatantly stick our heads in the sand and blatantly pretend that all is right with the world. 
Because you know, for a couple of hours a week, there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. So every day, um, Claus Man and I go and have one cup of coffee in the afternoon. Yes, those of you that know that I quit drinking coffee for a, a long time, I'd have one cup of coffee in the afternoon because I look forward to it. It's like my treat. The rest of the time I drink tea or water. And so anyway, we were, we go, we'll go to the same place for a while until people figure out that that's where we go all the time. And then they start, you know, they'll go, oh, we know where they are. So we'll go talk to them. It's like, that's not the point. So then we have to change our meeting place sometimes. But anyway, um, I don't know if it was last Friday or Saturday, sometime we were in there. And it was one of the days that I'd been on the air, either with the stream here or with um, the Mandela Madness show and share session or something, I don't know which. Anyway, there was a, most of the, the um, people that work at this particular place are college students. And so, you know, we get to where we know their names. We don't know, you know, don't know anything personal about them, but know their names. And sometimes we know, I'll find out what subject they're studying in college and that kind of stuff. So anyway, one of the, one of the young girls last week said something about what did I, she wanted to know what I did or something like that. And I told her that I'd been streaming that day. And she said, you do what? So we had this long conversation about what streaming was and, you know, what, how to get creative was and all that kind of stuff. And her reaction was priceless. She got, at the end of the, um, the conversation, which she was fixing the coffee the whole time, got to the end of the conversation and she's, and she's a very enthusiastic young girl, college student, and she goes, I just feel like I know someone famous. <laughs> she says, you're always so quiet when you're in here. It's like, yeah, because I'm all talked out. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah, that's what she said. She says, I feel like you're, she said, I feel like I know someone famous. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Believe me, I put on my blue jeans one leg at a time just like everybody else. Okay, so we're almost at the end. Isn't it looking pretty? Don't you love it? I love it. I don't know if you guys love it, but I love it. And every time I do this, I'm always so surprised at how it comes out. Even though it's like, I made the papers, I should know what the papers are going to look like together. They're, especially when you have these ombre kinds of patterns like this and ombre looks, they just have such an interesting look when they're put together. Patty doesn't always agree with Barb. I saw that. What are you not agreeing with me about? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> What are you not agreeing with me about, Miss Patty? Do tell. I saw that I looked up just in time. I know, it's a fun technique. And you, can, you don't have to use... Now, to do a wavy pattern like this, you really need to work with, you know, two distinct sheets of paper. You can weave... Um, when you're just weaving straight strips, of course, you can weave anything you want. Ah, I see. Patty says, not drawing the mandala from seed with a pencil. She didn't agree with me. Well, see, that's the whole point of that one, is to just go for it, and you don't worry about it. The two that, when I did those for you guys, those were done totally without any pencil. 
Okay, so at the end, you're going to end up more than likely with a strip that's left over. And so this one's not going to fit. But that's just the way it ends up. Okay. Yeah, the whole point of that technique is just to go for it. All right, let's see if we can get these. This is, you know, back to the, any, any strip at the end of the process is a complete annoyance because it doesn't want to just, doesn't want to just slip in there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to glue this baby down as we go. And if you work on something like a craft sheet like this, then you don't have to worry about getting glue on your table or anything else. So, okay, so here is our woven sheet of paper. Isn't that pretty? And what it does, especially if you have a continuous pattern, um, it, you, the pattern will just disappear and reappear all the way across. It's not quite as obvious when you're working with papers like this, but um, it's pretty, I think it's pretty interesting. Okay, next step. I'm gonna stabilize the entire back of it. So I need to go get rid of this because I need to get my ironing board. So let me do that. So this is the same board I had a minute ago. It's just turned over. So on one side, it's a rotary mat. On the other side, it is an ironing surface. And I'm gonna cover it with a piece of parchment paper. If you don't know what parchment paper is, it looks like this. You, if you have a grocery store near you, you can often find it in the grocery store. If you don't have this where you live, I did put a link from Amazon, which you can buy three boxes of it for the price that's uh, with that Amazon link. And believe me, if you do any amount of creative stuff, you will get, you will run through three boxes fairly quickly. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to take my sheet. I'm going to turn it upside down, and I'm going to use a piece of steam a seam. Okay, this is a Stima Seam 2. This is a fusible adhesive, fusible web. I'm going to take one sheet. This is 9 by 12, and we started out with the sheets being 9.5 by 12.5, the original sheets. So this way, this will fit on here without going over the edge. So that's why I chose that size. Michael says Dollar Tree has parchment paper. There you go. If you have a Dollar Tree, you're in. Okay, so I'm peeling off one piece of paper. This is a fusible glue sandwiched between two pieces of paper. So this is the glue. It is pressure sensitive, so it's sticky, but not permanently sticky until you apply the heat. So I'm going to put this down on my the back side of what I'm doing here. And then cover it with another piece of parchment paper, like so. And then I'm going to use a dry iron because I'm working on paper and because um, I have it 
sandwiched between parchment paper. There's no point in using steam at all. And then uh, the heat is going to bond, fuse that glue to the back side of my woven sheet, which will also act as a stabilizer for the weaving. Okay, so I'm going to take this off and then I'm going to flip the whole thing over. When you're working with paper, it is very, it gets very, very hot. So you have to be aware of that. It gets super hot so it can burn your hands, much more so than fabric. Hello, Jamie. Okay. All right. So this is going to, um, cool off for a minute and so I'm going to show you a cutting guide here so I'm just going to fold my paper to get all the extraneous stuff out of the way and I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut it and I'm going to put this on the screen and if you're watching the recording you can stop the recording and you can copy it down if you want okay so let me zoom in as big as I can get this. Okay, so this is how I'm going to cut this thing. Okay, so I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to cut, this is based on a, a 9 by 12 piece of paper, and ours is 9.5 by 12.5, so we're good. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten up two of the sides, all right, and then I'm going to cut one cut all the way across that's three and three quarters inches I'm going to cut it all the way across then I'm going to cut that strip into five inches and five inches and this is going to be wasted stuff for something else now this is not necessarily to scale just so you know this is not to scale from the remaining part of it, I'm going to cut a strip that's three and three quarters inches wide all the way across. And then I'm going to get a five inch and a five inch and a five inch. So I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five card fronts out of this. Okay? So that's how I'm going to cut this. All right. Just so you know what I'm doing. And just so you know where we're headed, I'll show you. For this particular thing, I'm going to be making card fronts, greeting card fronts out of this. So the, this is the piece that we're cutting. So we're cutting it down. Then I'm going to put it on a mat, a colored mat, and then on a card base. Okay? Not terribly wasted stuff. Just a little bit of wasted stuff. Okay. Alright, so because I'm going to rotary cut this, I need to flip the board. So here is the board flipped around. This is my rotary cutting surface. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to straighten one long side. Okay. This is where I'm going to use my heavier rotary cutter. This is the 45 millimeter because it has a little more heft. So I'm going to stand up to do this and hope I don't blow your ears out. So this is junk, so I can move that junk. And then I'm going to just flip it around and I'm going to cut this just to even this up.
every time you set your rotary cutter down, notice that I'm covering the blade. Okay, that's open, that's closed. Don't ever set your blade down like this with an, or your cutter with an exposed blade. Always, always, always cover the blade. Always. I don't care if you're setting it down for one second. Okay, enough of my lecture. Okay, we're going to turn this around. And we're going to make one cut that is three and three quarters inches. And I'm using a quilting ruler to do this. Three and three quarters inches. And I, my side is straight down here at the bottom and straight here. So I can safely line things up with those two edges. All right, three and three quarters. And then I also line, pick a line and I line it up across the straight edge. Okay? All right. So make sure I'm lined up. At the best the best I can all right so we have that we're gonna take this one we're gonna scoot it to the side we're gonna take this one and we're gonna cut it at five inches Okay, hopefully this makes sense. The Fisker's ruler is only 12 inches. This one is 12 and a half. It makes a difference because I'm working with a bigger piece, that's why. But if you have the Fisker's one, the little one, and that's what you have to use, that's what you use. All right, so this and this also on this ruler, let me show you on this, see if I can show you. Do you see right here, see these little numbers? That helps me square things up because I know that at this corner is a five inch, it's a five inch width. So that's another reason I'm using this one. Okay, so five inch. So I put my five inch, little five inch mark right there. And then I line up this line and that line with the straight edges. And do it again. we have those two. This is for other projects. Alright, this one is five inches this way, so we're going to go three and three quarters by five. And one more. Okay. All right. So if you are making cards, if you decide to do cards this particular size, you get five out of that sheet. Okay. So you get five out of that sheet of nine nine and a half by twelve and a half and you end up with this and this and this 
and this and this. That's what you end up left over for other stuff. So you don't have much waste in this whole project in one strip from the original weaving. So there we go. Okay? All right. All right, so we're going to get rid of my cutting board ironing mat for the moment. Now, once you do this, the adhesive is on the back, right? And it is covering the whole back, which makes it easy to apply to the next step. But once you cut this, you're going to expose some edges. And so then I use um, some tacky glue, or you could use Scotch Quick Dry or whatever else you like. And just a straight pin. And I just go in here and I find all the loose edges because these are the ones that are on top. These are the ones that are not in contact with the adhesive underneath. And I just go through and just check everything to see, you know, what's loose all the way around. But by using a straight pin, this is a corsage pin, an old one that I've had forever, you can um, secure easily anything that's loose. But you can also control the amount of glue that you're putting down there. You still want to have a Kleenex or a paper towel or a baby wipe or something handy. So you need to just take a minute and just go around and check. At least that's what I like to do. You might like to do something completely different. See like this little bitty, see that little end, that little sliver of a bit? That, I want that glued down because if I don't glue that down, that's going to get ripped off and look tacky. So I just go around and check and I just do it at this stage so that when I'm ready to apply them to the next thing, they're all done. And if you have some in the middle that are sticking up that you don't like, you can do the same thing. You can stick some glue under there. I don't mind the ones in the middle. I think they look kind of cool when they're a little bit bubbly. So, okay. Art bits. That's right, Alice. Art bits. So just take your time, you know, this is kind of a zen kind of process doing this actually. It's kind of a mind numbing sort of zone out, go into your happy space. And I just check it all the way around because you can see how that flips up. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want that glued all the way down. But you don't know where you're going to glue. I don't want it all glued. You know, I'm not going to take every step and glue every little tiny intersection with the papers in the beginning. You saw how I kind of spot glued it. I don't want to do all that glue every little thing in the beginning. That, uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't work for me. This works for me. And then if you find any little bits later that you need to touch up, you can do that later. Okay, so we have, we'll put these here. Maybe you can see them. Okay, so we got those two. All right, let's go to this one. And the tacky glue, as it lives up to its name, it tacks up pretty quickly. So you can uh, move on pretty quickly as you do. And it's not a super duper wet glue. 
so you know it doesn't tend to warp the paper and all that so now this one is bubbling up a little bit more than I want and it's kind of toward the edge so I'm gonna finagle some glue in under that and then I'm gonna sit here and hold it a minute till it tacks up we all do Patty we all do sometimes you have to play tricks on yourself too all right, this little bitty guy has got to have some serious glueage going on here. And putting that little bitty part of that back down really does make a difference. You know, it completes the line. So I want that to go down where it belongs. I want it to stay put. Looks like this one needs a little bit more. Sometimes I get one glued down and then I go, well, I didn't do a very good job of that. So I go back and give it a little bit more. Okay, so there we got that one. Looks good. Got two more. But I think this is a really fun way to use some of your created papers. It could be um, jelly print or gel print the, with the jelly plate or the gel press plate, mono printed papers. Um, it could be paste papers like these. It could be scrapbook papers. You don't have to use commercial papers. You can use or handmade papers. You could use commercial papers. Alright, almost done. Let's see if we have any more here. Maybe this one needs a little bit. Sneak a little bit of glue under that. Alright, we got one more to do and then we'll go on. Don't let me forget to show you the other the other project I have where I've used these. Uh, woven papers. We'll do that. We'll do that at the end. And you could do this, you know, you could make it, if you want to make it even a greater challenge for yourself, you could cut smaller strips, like narrower strips of paper. And you can make them into um, ATCs. This is a this is to me is a little bit big for an ATC, but ATCs are artist trading cards, and they're always two and a half by three and a half inches. But these would be great backgrounds for that that you could do something with. Oh, and I forgot to do one thing to this batch that I did to the other batch, so we'll talk about that because I didn't actually do it on this batch. Not that I couldn't, but I didn't. I probably forgot it on purpose. It's a subliminal thing. <laughs> it's a subliminal thing. We could probably still do it. Yeah, we will. All right, let me get rid of my stuff here. What I actually did in the first, with the first sheets that I did this with, you see the splats? See the dots? When it was one whole sheet, I splatted it with inks. Okay, so I used different kinds of ink and splatted it. So what we're going to do this time instead, since I've already cut them apart, 
is we're going to splat them while they're all together. How's that? Yep. So, let me get, um, okay, let's get this. We're going to put these all on this, just like so. Okay, so we're just going to put them together here, like so. Now, when you splat things, um, you're going to have to cover everything you don't want splatted. Because last night I splatted my screen, my monitor screens. I mean, I even covered stuff up, but I still splatted things I didn't want to splat. So I have some towels here. And some, just some stuff to kind of protect the area. I'm going to scoot this as far toward me as I can. Okay, so I've covered everything I can manage to cover. The monitors aren't going to get covered, so we'll just clean those up afterwards. So on this one, I think we'll use iridescent gold and we'll just use all three of them. So I have F&W pearlescent. This is waterfall green. This is FW pearlescent. This is Genesis green. It's also pearlescent. This one is Liquitex professional acrylic ink. This is an iridescent bright gold. All right, so let me get my brush. There are lots of ways to splat your stuff. One is with a fan brush like this. You can also use an old toothbrush. You can use a round brush. Each one gives you a slightly different splatter pattern. Okay, so I have two brushes here. So let's start with um, the green. I know, Stephen. I know. It's, it gets messy fast. And I even have on a relatively decent shirt, so yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to try my best to be careful. Famous last words. Okay, so I'm going to use the um, round brush. I'm just going to get it wet. So I dipped it in water off to the side so it's wet, and then I'm going to get some of the ink and then just gently gently splatter and it just depends on how much you got and that one I felt go on my face. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't good. So we're not going to do that one again. <laughs> because I now have green on my face. And green on my shirt. But, you know, hey, it's all for you guys. It's all for you guys. Okay, do I have enough green? It's green enough. Okay. Now we're going to go to the waterfall green. I know, it's just crazy how, how every place the splatters go. It is crazy. Alright, we're going to use the same brush just because I can dip it into the bottle. But the thing about splatters is they go everywhere. So just don't blame me if you splatter things that you don't want to splatter. If you've never done this before,
and sometimes they get big and sometimes they're small. It just, they turn out the way they turn out. If you don't like serendipitous um, results, you're not going to like this. Okay, then we're going to do a little bit of iridescent gold. But this just does add a little bit of something unique to the surface. I like it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Okay, we're going to stop with the splatters. It really is better if you have on old clothes and you do it places where you don't care about the surrounding area. Okay, I got to get rid of this. Be right back. Okay, and then what we're going to do, I can safely remove the splatter towels now. And I'm going to, excuse me, heat, uh, hit this with a heat gun to set some of these splatters. Hi, Diane. Hello, Dar. I remembered your name. Hi, Monique. It doesn't take the splatters too long to dry, but unless you have big ones like that one right there, that's a big motor scooter. Um, so that's going to take a minute. And you want to keep the heat moving. I see a place I need to glue. Um, you want to keep the heat moving because um, acrylic and heat sometimes can, well, you saw what it did with the glue. But if you hold the heat right down on it, sometimes you can boil it. And sometimes that's a very cool technique. But yeah, if you don't want that, then don't do that. Yeah, you got to wrap yourself in plastic if you don't want to have splatters on yourself. That's for sure. Don't do splatters when you have on a good shirt. It's not a good idea. Okay, that one looks pretty dry. So keep your heat source moving over the splats, over the acrylic. Another reason to keep your heat source moving is the paper gets hot, so it becomes hot to handle. So I got that little, this little bit I need to re-glue or put glue under. Sometimes you just miss them. Even though you're trying to catch all those little edges, sometimes you just plain flat miss them. Okay. This one has some real splats on it. It's got some good splats. Bigger than just splatters. It's got splats. It's got splats. Okay. So I'm going to go back here for just a second with the glue.
put a little glue there to hold that that I missed before. And on this one, I missed this one entirely. How? I don't know, but I did, so, you know. It happens. All right, we should be good. So while those finish up kind of drying for a little bit, let me show you this other um, way that I use this technique. This was in my art journal. And this is recorded someplace at some point in time because I did it as a stream several years ago. So this is done in a similar technique, but this one I actually decorated the paper. This is not paste paper. So this was mixed media paper, I believe, that I started out with. I decorated two sheets in two different colorways. And then I did the weaving. The weaving, um, the strips were not cut quite as in quite as narrow a cut as I did on, um, on the ones that we did today. And then I wove them back together, and then this is, this it's this big, okay? So it's this big, however big this is. I guess I could measure it for you, couldn't I? It is six and a half by nine and a half. And so then I attach that to the journal page. This particular journal page um, was just a bunch of leftover paint in the background. And I may have added a little something else to it, but I think this was leftover paint. And then I lettered around the outside edge, edge that says, my life is a patchwork of experiences and it's beautiful. So that's what is around the outside edge. Okay. Nancy, you have to show it tomorrow. Get on that camera, girl. So you can use this in a, this technique in a variety of ways. These was these were papers that I made specifically for this purpose. So you can do it like that. So well, again, while these others are drying, I'm going to show you the cards up close and personal that I did, just because it's fun and easy and I love having cards on hand that I can send to people. So here is, this was all from one sheet of paper. You can see the, the um, they're different around the outside edge because I matted them with different colors and put them on different colored card bases. But these are all from one, one sheet of woven paper. Okay. There's a video about paste paper several weeks ago where I did the whole technique on the stream. So you can find that. Just look in the live stream playlist and you'll find it. It's not very far back. So there's that one. So you can see how different the colors change when you go from one matting color to another one same piece of paper but again the paper is kind of variegated as it moved through but you can see the different colors make a big difference in how they turn out how they show and because I didn't put any words on these at all then you can use them horizontally or you can use them vertically so you can use them either way I didn't put any words on them because I don't know what, I'll probably add a word or a phrase or something before I send them out. Okay, so there's how those turned out. Let's see if we can come back to this now. Okay, um, what I have is I have a whole bunch of mats that I've cut, and this one will have to get turned over because it's got stuff on it. Um, so I've got a bunch of colors of mats like this, and these are cut. Remember the the um, original artwork was cut three and three quarters by five. Okay, three and three quarters by five. These are cut four by five and a quarter. Okay. 
And the card bases that I use, these are pre-done, pre-folded, and they measure five and a half by four and a quarter. So those are the measurements I'm working with. If you're working with different measurements, you'd have to adjust them accordingly. Okay. So let's, um, this one with the great big splots on it, this one we're going to set to the side. I'm not going to mess with it because um, I'm not sure that it's fully dried. So we're going to just ignore that one for now. So I'm going to just pick out the, um, what I want to put underneath these to begin with. I'm only concerned about the, the mats, okay? That's all I'm concerned about. So I have a variety of colors here, so I'm going to just play with some and see how they look and see if I like them. So we'll just play with some different ones and see what it looks like. Like, okay, do I like this color? Do I like that color? Okay, I like that one. Do I like this? Actually, I do. So I have learned not to second guess my decisions also. I make a decision and I move on. I don't sit and ponder about, is that right? Is that not right? Okay, there's that red and there's this red. And I like this one better. I think the more muted red's better, so we're doing that one. And then this one. Let's see, what else do I have here? Maybe we'll go see what black looks like because I always like black under things too so we'll do that okay all right decisions made so I'm going to just keep those together in the order what goes with what and then I'm going to come back to my ironing station with a piece of parchment paper. I'm just going to fold it in half because it will make it easier to work with here. So we're just going to fold it in half. Okay. And I'm going to flip it open like this. So we're going to take the top one. So here's my card base or my mat. Now I'm going to take the second piece of paper off the back of my little artwork. Remember I said this is pressure sensitive. So I can put this on here. If I don't like it, I can pick it up and move it. And, you know, I get it as straight as I can. I don't sweat it a whole ton because there's too many things to do in life besides worrying about whether something is straight. Now, it's not going to move because it is, it is stuck together pressure sensitive glue. Turn it over, cover it, and then iron it to fuse it together. Then I'm just going to open this, flip it over, and I'm going to iron it one more time. And now that is that card front is fully fused together. It's all done and it's ready to go on the card. So that's what we're going to do with the rest of these. All right, so here is the, the mat. Just pull the paper off. And this is better if you stand up and look down on it. If you don't, You just kind of have to do the best you can. You go, good enough, moving on.
flip it over, repeat from the other side. Done. Next. Remember that the paper gets incredibly hot, so handle it carefully. And this one, I can see that I've got two little sections here that need to be glued. So I'm going to set that one off to the side. So you just you find them as you, um, as you work through the process. But working with the fusible glue, I find, makes it nice and easy. There are lots of different fusible glues out there. I use them in fabric and paper all the time. Okay, so we have these done. And then this one I'm going to repair real quickly. Well, it's not repairing, it's just making sure that these little little bits, these little ends get secured the way I want them to be. And this one. You're safest to use a pin as I was showing you earlier. You have to be really careful if you're working out of the big glue bottle. And then this one that had the big splots on it, I'll fix that up later. Well, after I'm sure that it's fully, fully, fully dried. All right, so there we have four of those done. Then it's a matter of just go through your card bases, and I buy them that have these different colors. I like these that have all the different colors in them. And then I just go through and pick things out and see what I think. You know, do I think this is going to work? Do I think that's going to work? So, for example, I'll just check things against the color. Go. And then I'll go, yep, that one's fine. That one's fine. Do you see how I don't spend a lot of time sweating the small stuff. That's fine. Just do it. Do it and move on. Okay. Good. Done. And then I just take these little mats that I have cut that match these card bases and I just stick them in the front of the box so I have them all ready to go when I'm going to use them. And I just have my little stack of stuff here. Then I have score tape because I find it's the easiest way to attach these. Uh, when you have something that's heavy, I find score tape works or something, something similar. Okay, Nancy, thank you. Um, I find it works better to use something that's a pretty heavy double-sided adhesive 
to do this. So I just put the adhesive all the way around pretty close to the edge. I'm not the best at doing this to tell you the truth. I do the best I can. You know what I mean? And once you get the card fronts secured to the card base, then you want to put the whole thing under some weight and they will flatten out for you. And then I usually add a little piece in the center just to make sure that the middle stays down. Then burnish it well with a bone folder of some kind. I love these Teflon bone folders. Then I take off the middle adhesive strip and release the two corners so bend back your corners Do like this okay then get your card your chosen card base and this corner and this corner don't have adhesive on them, okay? The adhesive, I mean, it's there, but it's not exposed. So I, one of the ways that you can help get yourself centered is by looking at this corner and hold, get it centered and hold it and line up the other one and then kind of press in the middle. That holds it together. Then you can rip out the tapes, the, um, release paper and then I open it and just go over from the inside okay and then that's that I didn't do any inking on any of these you could if you wanted to but I chose not to but you see how they kind of want to curl a little bit so once you put them under weight under something really heavy. These have all been weighted overnight with something heavy. They're completely flat. You can see how they're flat. So that is what I recommend with that. So that's that. We'll do one more and then we're going to call it a day. Okay, so once again I use the double-sided adhesive and the reason I use this ruler is it just gives a nice straight um, straight tear I don't know if all of them will tear this way but this one does this is score tape and that way you don't get these wonky um, weird angled things where you tear it, which if you tear it with your fingers, it tears fine, but sometimes you don't get the adhesive all the way to the edge or into the corner. More accurately, you don't get it into the corner. So you just lay down something that has a kind of a sharp, a square corner, square edge, good square edge and then you can just tear against it and that works out really well. The score tape is real um, sticky stuff. It's not something that you want to make a mistake with very often. You can get it off if you use um, undo but you can kind of mess up your artwork too. So do your opposite corners. Okay, so you've released the opposite corners, but you don't have all the adhesive released all at once. Okay, so line it up using the corners without the adhesive. Just kind of get a visual.
once you go good enough moving on pull out the tape the release papers open it and go over it from the inside okay that's how you do it and you can do them pretty quickly you can do those pretty fast so in that amount of time and I still have these to do but in what we started we had a little problem when we started so like uh, we started maybe the, probably close to 1.30 today there's one of the sheets from one of the sheets one of the cards and there's the other one that we have put together so far but you can see what a difference the mat around that little peak of color around the edge makes and then the card base color makes a difference too and how very different they look from each other even though they're the same from the same woven piece of paper so that that's how you do it. So that's an idea for using your um, paste papers or other hand created papers. Any questions? Pop them in the chat. Thank you so much. Let me see. Where is your name? Uh, I know I have it here. Oh my goodness, I know it's here. I cannot see it. Light and laughter. You're going to have to tell me again because I can't find it. I thought for sure I had it on my list. But anyway, thank you, light and laughter. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Katie. That was very sweet. Um... It is. It is fun, Travis. He says, pulling those pieces of paper out looks like fun. It is. It's very satisfying <laughs> because you can, when once you've got the, the card front secured down, you just rip them out. It's very satisfying. Sylvia, I know it's on here somewhere. It's all right. I'm going to write it again. I, I rewrote my list. Thank you, Sylvia. Okay, so it's time to get out. I don't have anything else to show you, I don't believe. So I'm going to get out the sponsor Rudy's and we're going to take off today. And by the way, in August, um, just to prepare you guys for this, in August, I'm going to be taking two weeks off. Yes, yes, I am. So I will give you plenty of notice, but um, yeah, I'm going to take a couple weeks off. I have streamed every Friday straight for a long time, <laughs> so I'm gonna, I have decided to give myself permission to take a break. So, all right, let me get um, let me get the sponsors out, and we'll say goodbye. Are you coming? Oh, hurry up. You're about to miss your time. You're about to miss your debut. Yes, you're about to miss it. Oh. You're welcome. Thanks for um, hanging out with us. Thanks for hanging out with us. Everybody, get up and get your foot up there. There we go. And here's Mr. Chance. Um, Charlie's all passed out in the window. He's way too tired in the window. So he just can't get out. <laughs> he just can't bring himself to get out of the window. Oh, here he is. He's talking to me. Are you coming up today? Do you think you can not cough when you get up here? You can? All right. Come on. Come on. All right. Sponsor number two. Here we go. As long as he doesn't start coughing, we'll be good. Yeah. Clean your face up. Clean up your face so you can show the world that you look pretty good today. Do you look pretty good? Okay. All right. <coughs> Charlie 
and Chance. Everybody's got cruddy eyeballs today, honestly. Cat duty. I thought I was done washing faces when my kids grew up, but no. Got to do it for these boys, too. Um, Chance loves the camera, don't you? You love the camera. You love talking to the peoples. Yes. So, <coughs> We are going to take off. So remember, Mandala, Mandala Madness show and shares tomorrow at 2 Eastern. Your email will have the link. And um, I will be back next Friday, same time right here. I don't know what we're doing yet. I think we might do some art journaling next week. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. They are 10 and 11. Chance is 10. Charlie is... He's 11. And he's very worn out about the whole thing. He's been laying in the window for the last two hours. So he's, uh, yeah, he's quite worn out. Quite worn out. Sorry about having to look at all the monitors. Anyway, thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much. You know, as I always say, remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.